got a new phone. I mean, given the position you were in at the hour mark, is, is the final score then kind of show as proved sport to me? Yeah, listen, it's, it's disappointing. I suppose the. You know, I haven't seen it back, but I think around the 65th or 66th minute, I, I think it was 15-13, and we would have been, well, you'd like to be ahead, but we're reasonably happy, like, we, we have finished game strong, and, and, you know, we knew if we got down the field one more time, we made the one-point game going in the stretch, so it was very much on, so, yeah, it's, it's disappointing, we were happy enough the way it was going, uh, but Dublin seemed to turn the screw from that point on, just in the last seven or eight minutes, um, and, uh, listen, they, they, they punish, punish us badly all day on, on turnovers, like maybe they've got to hit one ten off turnovers, um, so so that's disappointing. And, and but there's some credit to Dublin; they put the squeeze on us at that point, and we, we didn't have the answers. I don't think. Um, but listen, at this point, I don't think. Listen, I don't think it's a fair reflection on, on the game and, and the effort the boys put in. What was the difference? Like, what was the win and the losing of the game in those last ten? Minutes? Turnovers. Turnovers is crucial. I think. It, when you get to this level and, and you're playing, you're, you're in that bracket where you're playing a top two, top three team, you give them the ball, you're going to get punished. Uh, and Dublin punished us. You know, I think we, we might have only scored four points from Dublin turnovers, and they, they, every time we made a mistake, they just pounced and, and, and away they went. So, listen, a, f a few of them were, were forced by Dublin and they, they earned the turnover, and a few of them were, were carelessness on our part. So, uh, I, th I think that's, that was the win and, lo and losing of it. And the, if you wanted to bring it down to time, it was the last. Last seven or eight minutes was was when they sort of opened up the gap. And you were you were targeted being touched at half time, and obviously like everybody knew after the quarter final, but the fifteen minutes after half time, you mm. saw that. Yeah, listen, we, we we targeted the third quarter during the week. We knew it was a, it was a key time for Dublin, and we we knew if we if we got through that third uh, quarter in parity, that we have a great chance of winning the game, and that's how it panned out we would have been happy enough the third quarter we we uh, we held firm we got a few scores of our own we we kept Dublin shut out um, and like I said the, the confidence we would have had from finishing game strong all year once we saw 66 minutes in the clock now we were pretty confident but um, credit to Dublin to know those last seven eight nine minutes or whatever was left after that point uh, they, they turned the screw and, and pressed us hard and it, it, it worked out and we didn't have the answers for it. And yeah, listen, I think probably a bit more athleticism and, and throughout, and especially in the field at that final point where we were maybe some key men were starting to get tired and uh, uh, some key men had come off and, uh, you know, Dublin were able to keep keep that and, and maybe that's where it really shows in those those last those last number of minutes and we've seen that from Dublin before where you know you, you think you're going well and you know that they, they can punish you in those last few minutes once you get tired or once you fatigue a wee bit. So I think that was that, that was partly to do it. I mean just your overall assessment, like last year, this your first year, people were saying, you know, there's a lot of talk about the modern post and we wanted it. You took it on. Like if someone would have said that this is what you do you do your first season, you're a bit better on, I'm not sure. Yeah, this we would be probably targeted. It was our first meeting of the year. We had a sense that there's a good chance we'd be in all Ireland semi final. Just with the new structure in that there, like um, you're in a group of four, it's very, you'd be very unlucky to finish bottom of that and be out of it. And once you're, once you're in it and you built up a bit of momentum, you had, you had a good chance. So, something we would have talked about or targeted, but um, no, I think that one measure of, of of your year is silverware and we don't have that and uh, obviously another measure is, is how far you go in the championship we, we made the last four so uh, and pl plus I suppose for for players point of view in the old system it was a long time depending how your year went it could take maybe three years to get players eight championship games experience you know you could play two games in a year and you're knocked out and next year you could have three and next year so for some of our players to, to play that was our eighth championship game you know, it's bound to kind of leapfrog them a wee bit and, and um, obviously some players at a young age now have experience of playing in the North Ireland semi-final that maybe the older boys didn't have when they were the same vintage. So you know, there's positives there if you build on it. Um, so yeah, listen, it wasn't, there was no silverware, but it wasn't, a, wasn't too bad of a year. At what stage did you decide that you were starting Connor 
Um, what stage of the side? Probably shortly after the match, two weeks ago. Yeah. It was pretty what much. difference in starting this time as opposed to not starting in some of the previous games? What, what determined that? Uh, what determined that? It's just you look at the, the opposition you're playing and where you could be, where you could be best, best used. Um, I just felt he needed another game to come on and, and, and play well to, 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 to get in from the start. I just felt that our my game was a 50-50 game. I felt we played them a few years ago and when it came down to the clutch moments, uh, Conor McManus was there and won us the game. It was the Ulster semi-final in 21, I think. So uh, I wanted them on the pitch at the end. That, that, that was the key thing. But once he got that confidence in from that game and played the full second half and the extra time, you knew then that he was ready to start and finish again. Before all this kicked, I mean, there was talk of Dublin Kerry final. Like, does that feed in as a sort of motivation for the uh, Not, not overly, not overly. To be honest with you, no. Listen, it's it's pretty predictable stuff. You know, it's of course they're going to be favourites. They have won all Ireland's, we haven't, so you kind of have to take that in the chin. Um, but but I think there was a confidence in the camp that it wouldn't be the foregone conclusion that people thought. I think maybe some of it was was a wee bit far-fetched that they were going to annihilate us all together. But listen, maybe you look at the final score and think that. But um, No, listen, we had played them a few times in league games and the boys are not naive enough to think it's the same as the Championship, but it does build a wee bit of confidence. We knew it was going to be a close enough game. We had the confidence of winning tight games in the Championship already and had a bit of momentum up. So listen, we were, we were confident enough and like I said, coming down the stretch, we were happy enough in the position we were in, but Dublin pulled away and that, that top three bracket those teams that carries Dublin's in this world, it's a tough bracket to get into. And, you know, it was looking good there for a while, but you have to play the full 75, and we, we got hit bad at the end. When you have that stretch after your minds free, like I'm sure you did those work in the How hard is it to beat that press and get it on? Say that again? No, that's after oh, sorry, the kick out press. <laughs> uh, yeah, listen, it's something we would have talked about, and, and especially um, we saw the damage they did to Mayo in the first five minutes. Where, where the first three kickouts Mayo got, got caught and maybe they hit one two off them and before Mayo started to move for the kickout. Maybe defenders when you play in the first half it maybe it takes a wee while to acclimatise to playing in front of the hill and, and that there. But um listen it's something we, we we would have talked about and we were happy enough that we would have got possession of those kickouts. But in front of the Dublin the, the squeeze is pretty hard. We we thought the kickout could have been on once or twice but um Listen, I suppose that the bottom line is at that stage of the game, when you are to make a hard run for kickouts and everybody's to make a hard run for kickouts to to open up space. If three or four boys are heavy legged and not making those hard runs, next thing there's no space and next thing you're forced along. And that could have been a factor in it. Vinny, I presume everyone you had on board this year, you're going to do your best to have them on board again next year. Yeah, listen, I don't see why not. I think you've seen there today there was, there was younger boys coming off tight and different things, but the older boys weren't coming off at all. Um, the Darren Hughes and Carlo Collins and Conor McManus, they played the full 70 plus, and some of them played against our mass 70 plus extra time. So I wouldn't be rushing the judgments there. I think them boys are, I think there's more in the tank than them boys, absolutely. You know, if you're playing a full 70 or 90 minute game this year, you know, in another few months' time, you're fit to do it again. But, uh, some of them boys have given a lot of service. Um, it'll be completely their decision, but we'll not be turning them away, that's for sure. Okay, folks. Thanks very much. Here. Thanks, man. All right,